It's the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Bulls and the Desperados. And it's kicking off next on Madden NFL 24. EA Sports coverage of the NFL finds us in South America in the vibrant and colorful Brazilian beachside city of Rio de Janeiro. Today, it's the opener of the 2023 NFL season as it'll be the Bulls of San Antonio taking on the Desperados of Rio de Janeiro. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, there's nothing quite like it. That feeling of beginning another NFL season, and these two squads are going to do just that in a moment. And what makes it so exciting is the range of possibilities these teams have before them, because we could be seeing one of these teams earn the Lombardi Trophy in February. A new season of NFL football is here, and we're off in 2023 on EA Sports. And no run back on this one, so the new season will begin at the 25-yard line. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. They'll be led out by one of the most productive QBs in the last decade. It's year 10 for the Fresno Stater now. Here's Derek Carr. It's been fun to watch his development through the years. And right now, what you see is a very confident quarterback who has a strong sense of self, totally understands the offense, and knows how to get the ball to his playmakers on the run. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, I mean, who would have thought this? A team based in South America, this inaugural season, these folks so excited and with good reason this is the nfl continuing to show that it's not just an american pastime really becoming a global game and what an addition to the league this will be and they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four car now to throw they'll set up the screen now to camara and he'll be taken down but he does have first down yardage got what they needed there the drive continues with a nine yard pickup I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially as pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. Meanwhile, Carr's throw caught by Alave, and they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle it, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Carr completes it. So the completion good for just three. And that'll bring up second down. It's a pickup of three. Brings up second and seven at the 47 yard line. Throwing now is Carr. That's complete to his running back, Camaro. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Back to the ground, it's Kamara. And the second wave of tacklers is gonna get him as they stop him behind the line. And now it looks like we're gonna get a timeout here. We've got a man shaking up. Boy, fingers crossed here, first quarter of a new season already an injury. And while they attend to him, we'll step aside. Now Carr throwing on second down. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Carr. And that one too wide and incomplete. Yeah, it's still early in the game. No sense taking a chance on third down and forcing one into traffic. So I like the wise play he made there. Get it to the sideline out of bounds where no one's going to have a chance at it. 
On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. Bringing them out is a guy who has spent a decade as a starter in this league, the 2019 Comeback Player of the Year, Ryan Tannehill. And one of the things that has really me about Ryan Tannehill has been his perseverance. Early in his career, didn't have the success that he desired. Had some injuries that slowed his development. But he kept working at his craft, and now he's a guy that I think you can put a game on his shoulders. Now the rookie third rounder from Tulane, it's Tajay Spears. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and ten. Now Tannehill. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. Nice third down conversion and even 20 yards. One down, only about 500 more to go this season. He would certainly welcome most of his passes this year going as well as that. Now that the first one is over, time to settle into a groove and begin the long journey towards week 18 and hopefully the playoffs. A first down carry for Henry. That's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. Again, it's Henry. Taken down by Pete Warner. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. On second down, here's Henry. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And this is not going to be enough. Was in search of two yards and only got halfway there. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. They'll run for it with Henry. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. So now following the roll of the dice, they've got a first and 10 inside the 35. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. him back to the 34. Call it a loss of five, a big sack to bring up third down. We're backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And that is incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. The folks' kick is good, and that'll make it 3-0 here in the first. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner? Because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. Back onto the field comes this offense, ready for their second drive. They were forced to punt on their initial drive of the new season. Now they're ready to go as they begin again with a first and ten. They start the drive on the ground, Kamara. And they'll get to him quickly here as he'll get a yard, just a yard to the 22. 
From the 22 now, here's the second down and nine. They run it again with Camara. And not much doing there, maybe a yard up to the 23. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who can do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess. That, and he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. The sack by Harold Landry, the former Boston College Eagle. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Now here's Lou Headley now. Here's more on the return. A very nice punt that time, but they get 11 back on the return. And this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and 10. Henry up the middle. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. From the 47 now to work with a second and seven. Brings up second and seven. At the 47-yard line. Oh, and they set the man in motion too late. This is going to be a delay. Delay of game. Offense. Well, the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. Still second down. Tannehill. He's going to find his receiver, Chris Moore. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. Tough spot here, third down and 11. Tannehill with a play fake to Henry. He'll throw instead. And he's going to be swallowed up. Sacked back at the 45-yard line. More than one defender there a loss of five on the sack. On fourth down, Ryan Stonehouse on the punt. Back deep, Rashid Shaheed. Three-nothing after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now, San Antonio in possession as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. the Rio offense about to set up shop once again. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change up the run? A nice burst there as they'll get about seven that time on the first down run even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play. It actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now Carr. Finding Taysom Hill complete. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. From the gun, it's a run for Kamara. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. 
But that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving the running back a crease to run through, and has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. This defense not budging back-to-back -back carries of just two yards. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the field. I was going to say. Normally, I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling it. I say go for it. Here's Lou Headley on now to punt the football. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Returning it is Moore. We'll call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And they will take over first and 10. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's a second down and four. Tannehill now to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches have told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. An effective seven-yard third down conversion. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. They work very well there for a first down. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Here's Tannehill. That pass complete to Moore. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. The offense on third down, two for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. Running from the gun with Henry. And Henry fighting for the marker, but I don't think he got there. He did not. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively, and it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. I apologize in advance, partner, but the B feeders on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Well, we got beef eaters licking their chops, a tasty dish in one fell swoop. I did apologize in advance, didn't I? Yeah, you did. That line's not eating tofu, I'll tell you that much for free. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Now the Rio offense set to take over. The results for them so far, not that great. Well, not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet. You're trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen or anticipated in practice, and maybe that's throwing them off? Or do they just have to go to a different play calling section and try and run some offense that way? After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. To throw his car. The pass caught by Alave. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. It's a gain of five. Brings up third and five. Here's Carr to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A very well executed play. It goes for 29 yards. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And Camaro with a call on first down as he works his way forward for a gain of about six. 
That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Carr. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. A nice pick up there, 10 yards. They certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. So from the 25, this is second and five. It's a game of five. Brings up second and five. Now a play fake. Carr. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Hill. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Carr going to try and throw on third down. They'll get this out to Camaro. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. A first red zone opportunity of the new year here as they come up now first and ten. They'll run out of the gun with Kamara. And he stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Well, fake the jet sweep, but instead of give up the middle to Williams. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage, and now third and 11 coming up. Second quarter, two minutes remain, 3 nothing. our score. What do they have for this? Third and 11. To throw, it's Carr. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. Well, how about the coverage we just saw break out on third down? Dive defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. And this one is right through. And that will tie us at 3-3. So they've put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. A big change in field position there. That's 40 yards on the catch and run. As we've seen over the years, offense coordinators will often ease their way into drives. Many of them don't want to risk a turnover or put their defense in a bad spot, but not in this case. Not at all. Forget about easing into it. They took a shot. It worked. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. To throw is Tannehill. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. Another first down this time. And I believe they buzz down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. On first down, it's Tannehill. 
short throw taken in by a Conquero. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end. Yeah, I believe they buzz down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. To the air again, Tannehill. Steps away to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Tannehill able to take off and pick up the first as well. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent gain. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. <laughs> just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Great defense there on third and goal. They took away everything. Forced them to fire that one to the sideline where no one could get it. Folks, kick is good. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals at 6-3. to three. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to 3. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. One more go for this offense in the first half. A slim deficit here in a one-possession game. Not much time left, obviously. We'll see if they can march this down the field, at least get three and take some momentum into the locker room. They'll set up the screen now to Camaro. Nifty move. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts. Car going to throw. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. The car's throw caught by his receiver, Hill. Now another timeout called for by the offense as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away and on now is the punter as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today and this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds and with time running down they go down to a knee so we've reached halftime here on opening weekend. As we send you to our EA studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome back to football, everybody. We've got a full slate of 16 games here to start the new season. So let's take our first trip around the NFL. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams. This was a very level first half, and I'd expect to see more of the same after the break. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. 
We'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. And this offense ready to go to begin this third quarter. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. Here's Tannehill. The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Second and five. Second and five. The line. Inside handoff, Henry. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. On third down, Henry. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll run it again with Henry. Breaks the tackle, he's got room to run. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 62 yards rushing for him in the ball game now on 14 carries. So two first downs, and that moves the ball to the 42 now, first and 10. They'll try the right side with Henry. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. Really nice effort and an even nicer stop for Marcus May there. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was saying about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And with the way this offense has played thus far, to be frank, they got to feel pretty grateful to be in the ball game. I would agree with you totally because they've done all of nothing offensively in this game, yet they still find themselves in a position on this drive where a touchdown can give them the lead. They need to take advantage of it. And they're still looking for that first touchdown here in the third quarter. All they have so far, the field goal. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. Play action, now it's Carr. Alvin Kamara wheeling it in on back-to-back -back plays. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. And a real first down. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. A tenth carry for Kamara. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Car to throw on second down. Little short pass here to Hill, and he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now Carr. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed, and on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there of finding him in stride for really good yardage. Throwing on first down is Carr. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. 
And he is down at the 48. A pickup of four that started at one 48-yard line and ended at the other. From the 48-yard line, here's second and six. At the 48-yard line. Now Carr. They complete it to Hill. And they move this all the way down to the nine. 39 yards there, a big one. That's the kind of play this offense desperately needed. They've got to be saying, our defense has kept us in the ball game. We're down, but we're certainly not out. And maybe that was the spark that they've been searching for. A chance for a first touchdown drive of the year. It's first and goal. Here's Carr. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive, and finally, I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They slapped the double coverage on him, made it very tough for him to get the ball. Jet sweep, Carr bats it forward. And he gets halfway home from the 10 to the 5 on a pickup of 5. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real. After having... And he's going to be dropped. Back at the 15-yard line. A nightmare on third and goal. He sacked, and multiple players broke through the line to get him. Third and goal, they decided to throw for it, but how about the play defensively? Couldn't find anyone open. Left him nowhere to go with the football. Had to absorb the sack. On fourth down, on his groupie to try the field goal. From the left hash, just a 32-yard attempt. And his kick is right there. It's good, and that will tie things up at 6-6. Six, six. So unable to convert for the touchdown inside the red zone, but they do come away with three. Yeah, it's a 32-yarder. That's essentially an extra point nowadays, right? Because it's 33 as a general rule for these guys. So it should be a simple kick. But you know what's really strange nowadays? When they miss an extra point, I think they carry that with them longer than missing a field goal because an extra point's supposed to be automatic. Absolutely, and I would think even field goals inside of 30 yards, even though they're substantially shorter than a PAT, it, it just has a different feel, doesn't it? A different it? feel, a different vibe. That's what I get from all the kickers I talk to. They always say, if I miss an extra point, that's the one that bothers me more. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. Demario Davis there on the stop. Ball on the 27. Here's a second and five. Here's Tannehill. Eight yards that time. Able to take off, and the result is a first down. Oh, partner, just a second earlier, and they might have had him because they certainly thought they were going to close in and drop him behind the line of scrimmage, but he had just enough time to dodge the pressure, and he ends up getting yardage before being stopped. On first and ten, it's Spears. Stiff-armed him, and he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. All told, they get 13 yards on that play. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get him. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. Meanwhile, Tannehill's throw pulled in by Hopkins. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that'll make it second down. Brings up second and three at the 46-yard line. Out of the gun, a give to Spears. And a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. 15 yards on the play, first down. Those are the types of runs they told us they want to see more of. Look, they'd love the 60 to 70 yard runs, but those 10 to 20 yarders, they can help you win a ball game. And that means everyone's invested because you know the big guys up front, that's what they do. They try and move people. But when you get your perimeter guys involved downfield, that means that they care about the running game and they know it helps their team. A good pick up there, a 22. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Might we see our first touchdown of the game? Here's first and goal. They'll try to run for it with Henry. 
And he pushes forward for maybe three down to the six yard line. That's good power football on first and goal. A lot of teams will throw from there, but that's a nice job to chew up a few more yards and get yourself closer to the goal line. They'll give Henry another shot. And he gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. Back now here on EA Sports. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. Now Tannehill on third and goal. And it's caught. Touchdown. DeAndre Hopkins from four yards out. And the Bulls have broken this deadlock and have taken the lead here in the fourth. Well, I think we both got to think in, in the team that scores the first TD may be the one to win this football game, and here we go. Our first touchdown, and it comes in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and it's a testament that both of these defenses were able to hold the line this long, but now on the other side of the field, they've got to be thinking if they got it done, we should be able to punch one in ourselves. Foot connects on the extra point, and they will take a seven-point lead. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Well, the Rio offense about to set up shop once again. They now trail by seven after that last touchdown here in the fourth quarter. What a big spot for this offense. See if they can cobble something together on this drive. They begin on the ground with Camara. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Good yardage there on first down, exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Able to get the one yard he needed, but nothing more. First down. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. Again, it's Camara. Shifts past him at the 45. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 41 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and turn his legs for a really nice pickup. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. Knifes his way forward here, but just three yards on the play. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. And a six-yard gain gets them right around the 43. A yard all they need, but it's third down. Now a toss, Camaro left side. And he will not only not get the yard he needed, he goes the wrong direction. He lost two, and it brings up four. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense was pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game. And all that pregame wolfing has turned into results. And they'll send out their punter now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Back out comes San Antonio. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but it's still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. Here now, second and nine from the 39-yard line. Out of the gun, Tannehill. 
That pass taken in by Burks. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It'll be a gain of 16 for number 16. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. On first down, Tannehill. He finds his man complete. That's Phillips. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. So from the 37, here's second and a couple. The 20th carry now for Derrick Henry. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. Fights off the defender. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. That's good for nine yards as they convert on the third down play. Just week one, but already plenty of intrigue with the games going on, and this one no different as we come up on a first and ten. What a great effort there. He's going to get this inside the 15, and they'll spot it at the 13-yard line. Nice run. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. A first down carry for Henry. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. A gain of three, second down. A three-yard pickup brings up second and seven at the 10-yard line. Tannehill now to throw. And it's caught. Touchdown, Chigakakwo from 10 yards out. And the Bulls are closing in on a winning start to the year as they extend their fourth quarter lead. He got it figured out by the goal line. This is where a tight end earns his money in the high traffic area. And he's able to work free in the middle of the end zone and grabs that one for a touchdown. Now Folk for the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. Now the Rio offense set to take over. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away, but the bottom line is that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Meanwhile, Carr's throw complete there to Perry. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. From the gun, it's Carr. Into the hands of Perry, complete. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical. You figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Well, that's a defensive coordinator has got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. Again, they'll throw with Carr. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. To throw, it's Carr. This one complete to his fullback out of the backfield. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. On first and 10, here's Carr. They'll get this out to Kamara. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. 
Now Carr. And he's going to be brought down here in the backfield. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. On first down, Carr. That's Alave bringing in another one. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Now first and goal. 18 more yards. Carr now to throw. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. Now Carr. And it's caught. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender. But the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. And that is caught. But he will come down out of bounds, says the side judge, incomplete. Okay, so he stepped foot out of bounds. Charles came back in first to touch it, and they got him for a legal touch it. Yeah, and you know it doesn't matter either, Brandon. Catch it, don't catch it. If you're the first to touch it, that's going to draw a flag. And he is into the end zone for a touchdown. Derek Carr keeping it himself from a yard out. And the Desperados have made it a one-score game again. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know. Doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. Well, they can smell victory, partner. They can see it on the horizon, but certainly we're not done yet. Your defense still has three timeouts, and obviously this is a very slim lead they're holding on to. And let's face it, the easiest way to get this done, challenge your ground game, challenge your offensive line, your tight ends, your receivers, anyone who's going to lay down a block. Don't let there be penetration because they're going to stack the line of scrimmage and maybe bring extra people to the ball. If you can do that, make them burn their timeouts, run out the clock, life will be good. But if you really want to gamble a little bit, a quick play action, quick throw, might be able to get it done. Just make sure it's not incomplete and stop the clock. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. to play. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Car to throw. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. But they got the yardage they needed there. Picked up the first down, got out of bounds. How about the urgency that they have as well as to understand where they are in the field. And I believe the referee's been buzzed. Yeah, they want to take another look at this call and it's certainly a big one here late in a tight game. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. Throwing his car. Alave holds it in. Taken down. What a 
huge play at this point in the game. Here's Carr. And that is incomplete. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one. Weren't able to do so. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. And now time for one final play that has to be obviously in the end zone. Can't wait to see what they call, but you want to get it to your best player. Sometimes you have to do it by formation, move everyone to one side, and maybe he gets a one-on-one -on -one isolated on the back side. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. Well, CD, always a little extra excitement for week one, and one of our early window games here in week one on a Sunday comes to a close. Good to be back in the booth with you, my friend. And it's good to be back in the booth with you as well. And we know that not everyone's going to start the season 1-0, right? Half the league is going to have a loss on their record. But everyone's going to have to build off of that opener. And how many coaches tell us every single year, you make your most progress between week one and week two. We'll see how both of these teams progress the rest of the season. So for San Antonio, it was a hard-fought game, and they'll exit 1-0 as they win by a touchdown. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for Rio, they go down to defeat here in the opener. And they will try to get back in the swing of things next week on the road. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.